Recording in progress. Here we go again. Photoshop Party 101. And today we are going to talk about making strokes and other stuff as we go along. So <clears throat> I've got no idea what I'm going to do yet. So we'll find out. So let's go ahead and share screen and get busy and get down to business. Get all these things out of the way. And what we're going to do is I'm going to make a new. Come on, you can do it. 10 by 8 at 300. Let's get rid of that. And I'm going to change the color of this to like a peachish. Light peach color just for demonstration purposes. That's kind of a dark peach. I oh, will do that. That's fine. And then we'll um, change it just a little bit darker. Not a lot, just to put a text in here. And I'm going to change the text from. Wow. That is weird because all my previous text that I was using have disappeared that I was going to have. So, okay. Let's do this one, and we'll raise the font up a whole bunch to make it bigger. And click OK. And I'm going to change the color of the font just because um, it's not quite, it's got too much contrast. I want to make it a little bit less, so let's lighten it up to where you can barely see it. So you can see that right now where it says lorem ipsum. Right. Cool. Barely see it. So I want to add a stroke to it. How hard is that? It's easy. Um, like 10 different ways. But the easiest way is on their text layer, you go to the right side where it has the wording and you just double click in the blue area. And it brings up your layer styles. And then you go down to stroke. And now you have a stroke. It's just that easy. Well, okay, that works. That color works. So go to stroke. And let's do it kind of a reddish colored stroke. So it's not quite standing out a whole bunch, but we can add the size. And everybody knows, you've been told this over and over, when you do a stroke for image competition, you don't want a huge stroke like this. You want either four to eight pixels, depending on the size of your image. Um, let's go with eight just for fun. And now you can see what's actually written there, even though the colors are close. Well, I want more. So I'm going to double click on effects. I'm going to go to drop shadow, add a drop shadow on there. Mm -hmm. And then I can add a second drop shadow to make it even more, to stand out even more. Um, like right now it's at 11. And you can play with these so they stand out just a little bit more. Opacity is at 57 on this one. And with your drop shadow, Another thing you can do is you can actually move the drop shadow by dragging it with your uh, cursor on the image itself. So you can change the direction of it however you want to have it happen. Um, or you can come up here and change the angle, do the distance. It's like, well, why not? Do it by eyesight and say, okay, this is where, yeah, I'm right about there. I want it there. Mike, do you, do you keep this on multiply all the time? Um, For drop shadow, 90% of the time, yeah, 99% of the time, yes. If I take it to screen, you can see it goes to a lighter color. Yeah. So if we change that to screen in that color, 
and multiplying that color wouldn't work very well, I don't think. A little bit of blue. But if you say, let's go with the darker blue and then drop your opacity down a little bit. I mean, it just depends on what you're doing. Okay. So most of the time, I would say yes, because your shadow is darker than what everything is. So if you walk outside, you look at your shadow, it's darker than the ground. Okay. So you're going to use multiply to make sure you're there. But you could do um, screen mode to change it to lighter, or you could change it to uh, soft light or overlay, which doesn't do a whole lot. Um, little things like that. So that's example number one, doing a stroke. How easy is that? I mean, cancel. Let's go back to open history, up to new, and let's go to our shape tool, custom shapes. And with custom shapes, um, Sometimes you have to go to window, to shapes, and then go to the drop-down menu here and say you want to um, bring in your legacy shapes and more. Without the legacy shapes, you got leaves or leaf trees, wild animals, boats, and flowers. I've added my legacy shapes in there so I have all kinds of different shapes so um, close tab group goodbye I said goodbye I mean it goodbye fine go away Whew. that was hard to get rid of that so with all my legacy shapes you have your arrows you have um, animals artistic textures, etc., uh, banners and awards. So if you want to put a, we'll do that, draw that out, hold the shift key to make it perfectly round. And I'm gonna change it from that orange is gold to that gold and everything's perfect. And what I can do with this, go to my layers. My phone was buzzing. I couldn't figure out where the buzzing was coming from. Go to my layers. I hit command or control. And I can now, you can see that I have this selected. So I can go up to edit. Where's my stroke at? It's disappeared. Okay, let's try this. Do a command J of just that and change it to a rasterized layer. Now it's selected, let's go to edit stroke. That's why it was grayed out because it wasn't rasterized. And I'm going to change the color from that beautiful yucky color that I had before, change it to black. And the keyboard shortcut for that is in the hexadecimal number at the very bottom down here, you hit zero, or you can hit zero, 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 zero. The hexadecimal number is six digits. And if you hit zero, it's going to turn it to black. And then it, right now it's set to one pixel. So let's say, let's go to five just for fun. And I always use inside as my location. Click OK, deselect. And now I have a beautiful stroke around there. So that's another way to do it. So anything that you want to do, um, you can. So let's unselect that. No, go away. It's not doing what I wanted to. Never mind. So much for showing that example.
don't save. A couple of things that I picked up recently that I have learned is in Camera Raw. You have beautiful settings here. I'm going, holy cow, there was zero on the Aurora the other night. So I click on auto and I got a little bit of Aurora there. Um, I'm going to take my highlights down a little bit, take my exposure down, which kind of takes the color out a little bit. But if I go to the uh, presets that are in Photoshop, which is this little circle within a circle thing right there on the right side, you can do some really cool presets in there. I can change it to blue, and you can see a little bit of blue and some aurora there. This is dark drama, new tropics, storm clouds, sunrise, sunset. And probably sunset's going to give me the most. So then I'll go back to my settings up here and go back to light. And then down to, say, color, add some saturation to it. And then color mixer. I'm going to click on the sample point color. Take this orange that's in there. And I'm going to drop the luminance down so it's not so bright. Drop the saturation down a little bit. Change the hue just slightly, a little bit more red. And so you go from that to that using a preset. So I had all the Aurora that I could find. Take it into Photoshop, play with it some more. Would you create a smart file for that to make it a smart object when you bring it in? I mean, a smart object, yeah. You could, yeah, definitely. Okay. Take it to another filter, say Skylum Luminar 4. And you got to wonder how many people cheated with their Aurora pictures <laughs> over the last weekend. I saw some, obviously, there were obvious AI generated. And I saw some that were amazing. You can go through here and pick out the one you like that's going to work the best for you. Go with that one, click apply. And in about 15 seconds, you'll see an amazing Aurora Borealis shot that never existed. I saw Ken Sklute had a whole bunch of really cool shots with cactuses in them. Um, Randy Van Dynen had a lighthouse up in Michigan. Eh, okay, that's a little overdone. So we'll fade it. Go to Edit, Fade. To about 23%. So you have before after kind of realistic almost then you have just a touch of extra color in there to get that reddish purple up there at the top and then with another one you also have panorama here i don't know if i can do it from here or not so I'm going to go to Camera Raw Filter. And you have your presets here. Same thing. And we'll go to Autumn. And pick the one that works. The, I like, I played with this earlier. And I like 12 the best for this particular shot.
and it just warms up all the before after it just warms it up and gives it more of a sunset and autumn kind of feel questions from anybody hmm. no questions you guys are kind of quiet today Let's see. So what about doing your stroke for like a comp image? Print comp image? Okay. Let's do that real quick. See if I've got it. Let's take this guy, for instance. Go and crop, get rid of that darkness up on top. And then I want to make the water a little bit darker and him a little bit lighter or her, whichever the case may be. So I'm going to go into my mas masking tool. And I'm going to select subject. And from here, what I would do is invert it so that the water is selected. I'm going to drop the exposure down probably about 40, 45%. And I'm going to drop the highlights down as well so that they disappear. So you have that. And then I'm going to go up to the mask, click on the three dots to the right of that mask, and click Duplicate and Invert Mask. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see now that the um, hippo is now selected so when i bring up the exposure a little bit and the shadows just a little bit um you can see that just the hippo is getting the exposure that i want not the outside edge so you have before and after so you can make things happen in magic so in this particular case what I'm going to do is go to my layers and I'm going to make a duplicate of the layer. So command or control J. And with this layer, I'm going to fill it with a darker color. So I will probably pick a color from within there. It will be for brush and bring up my eyedropper tool. Take one of these dark blues and I'm going to fill it. So I'm going to hit Option, Delete. That might not be dark enough. We'll see. Hang on. And go up to Layer 1, Command or Control T. Hold the Option key to shrink it down. And I think that needs to go a little bit darker. So let's go to our color over here. And you can see where it's at on your color picker. So to make it darker and a little bit more blue, I'm going to drag it to the right and down. And then fill it again. That's a little better. Now, do you want the stroke on this particular image? Or do you want it outside of the image by a little gap? Outside. You got it, boss. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to add a stroke on there right now. So double click here or go down to FX. Go to stroke. That's not the color stroke that I'm looking for. <laughs> so let's go with. Let's try that one. And it's set to eight pixels. And the thing to remember, let me zoom in on the corner over here so you can see the stroke corner. Right there, you have a sharp corner and it's set to inside. If you set it to outside, it becomes a rounded corner. And if you set it to center, 
it's kind of in between not quite sharp but not quite rounded so i'm going to stick with inside um eight might be a little too much so let's take it down to six and you can see the eight is highlighted on the size right here all you have to do is hit the down arrow and it takes it down for you hmm. would how would it be for print comp if you did the outside the very outside of the and made it round on the edges the judges would look at it and make a comment about being rounded corners. They don't, it's not traditional. If it goes with the image, you're okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this layer. This one's attached. If I went command or control T to free transform, and I'm going to go up to the top toolbar, type in 102. Click OK. It also did 102 on the height, did 102 on the width, so they're both the same. Locked it in. Now I'm going to take the fill down to zero. And you can see that it made a stroke on the outside of it. If you did opacity mm -hmm. instead of fill, what would happen is drag your opacity down, the whole thing disappears. Right. So you got to make sure that you're going with your fill, not your opacity. So, so you can see it a little bit better. Let's go ahead and change the stroke color. So you have the gap there, and it's got too much shadow up there from the original image, which I can redo if I need to. But let's say we went to the outside. You can see it's a little bit rounded there. It doesn't appear too bad here, but as you look close, you can definitely see that it, a little bit of roundness there versus inside. And then you got you can play with your blend modes if you want, where you can multiply. It gives you something a little bit different. Um, screen makes it a little bit lighter. Soft light messes with the mid-tones on it a little bit but you can play with those and do whatever you want you can add a pattern to it if you wanted to which i don't like doing but it can be done you can add a gradient so it goes from blue to black oh i would love to hear what they had to say about something like that <laughs> i ain't even gonna go there <laughs> there it goes from white white to black now but you can also change the colors so let's go with um red click ok change the white by clicking on the bottom dot down there let's go to more of a blue so if you have a red white and blue themed image you can change your stroke so that you go to blue and red so if you have a police officer image you could do that and let it do all the work for you and if you don't like it you turn it on and off and see what you do want to change and turn off the stroke Go back to effects and we can do drop shadow and change it from soft light to screen. And that looks really stupid. We can change the color here to a lighter color. And that's like 
what the heck did you just do? <laughs> I don't know what I just did. I screwed it up big time. <laughs> command Z, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z. <laughs> oops, 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 oops. There we go. Back to where we started. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I taught my class at Texas school the oops key command or control Z that is your best friend and if you look at this really tight you can see that it's not quite the same distance from top to bottom to left to right so what I would do is make sure I'm on that top layer go to command T which is free transform unclick the maintain aspect ratio chain link up there. Let my computer catch up. It's going slow. And the width, I would change from 100 to 101. And that's probably a little too much. So let's go back 100.5. So you can see, let's go down to the bottom where you can see it better way down whoa come on there we go you can see the difference there so if we went command z you can see that it's tight on the left hand side there and if i go back free transform you can see that it's better suited to match up when you do it on the outside you got to make sure that your lines match up so when the judges look at it they go um there's a little difference here why is that okay we'll take off 30 points for that 77 judges are mean i shouldn't say that because i'm judging tonight so um other questions hmm. we did a special effect in a previous version where we talked about Bevelin and Boss and uh, making the image pop that way. So you can go back on my previous video on that one. Just look up print competition settings and stuff. So easy peasy, right? Everything's super easy. Meh. Oh, that was good. Any other questions out there? No. Robert, good to see you today. Glad you could join us. Thank you. Good to be here. And if nobody has any questions, let me turn off the recording. Then you can ask your questions. <laughs>